Michael Franny, Jolene, and Jay. How are we doing on the uh, follow-up to Sound of Sunshine? Well, we're just getting started. We, we've been um, doing a lot of remixes for this record because the re album just came out in, in Europe like this week so we've been doing a whole bunch of like club remixes and remixes of songs and and um but we're, we're always writing songs like this one and others that'll make it onto the next record so um you had uh, some some great things you were a good friend with gil scott heron yeah uh, and you had some things to say on. I know you're uh, you're on Twitter. I don't know. Are you on yeah. out now? Like Shaq is? No. What's that? I haven't heard about <laughs> That's that. That's how Shaq and Shaq's that's always first, man. Yeah. Uh, on tout.com. Yeah. Okay. I got to get on tout. Got to get no on tout more. now. Uh, but please share uh, some words on Gil. Well, Scott Gil Scott Heron, Heron was um, an incredible genius. You know, a musical um, poet and one of the godfathers of rap, you know, and one time I asked him, I said, Gil, you, do you feel like you're one of, the, you know, or the possibly inventor of rap? And he said, I, I'm not the inventor of rap, but I was definitely there while it was being invented. And um, he had this clarity, even through his most heaviest times of addiction. And there's no secret to anybody who saw his shows or who knew him personally that he was an addict and he sang about it in his songs. And um, you know, I was really sad to see him go because he, he was always really truthful with me about everything. And um, he, he was really, uh, would be, be very inspirational when he talked to me. Like he'd always say, you know, look, you're the next generation and you and you know, your, your, your generation of musicians really has to carry this torch of making beautiful music that means something to people. And he told me that the role of the poet uh, was to make difficult things easy to understand. And through music, though, you, you do that. You, you go past statistics and, and ideas to emotions, and people understand things. And uh, so I was, I was really sad. I had a couple really sad days, but um, I'm really uh, grateful to have known his music the way I did and to have known him as a person. Well, I think that's one of your great gifts, uh, that you are able to find the words uh, that other people are feeling but don't know how to express. And uh, I think you've done that for a long time. And, Thank and you. And we appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and I know you travel all over the world, and you also visited uh, your ambassador for CARE now. Yeah. Tell me about that work. Well, CARE is a, a relief organization that's been around since right after World War II and, and um, the great thing about CARE and the reason that I work with them as opposed to other relief organizations is that they don't do food handouts so you're not going to see these images of you know s trucks delivering sacks of corn and people scrambling to get them they go into communities and they and they educate they work with um, especially with girls education of girls is really important mm. in terms of eradicating poverty and they set up micro businesses so that people can help themselves you know the idea if you teach a man to fish and he can fish the rest for, or a woman to fish and they can uh, fish for, for the rest of their, for yeah. their life well. yeah and so that's what care does and last week we were in Haiti and um, uh, just going to, to, to see what was happening down there and play music in some of the tent villages and you have two million people who live in the city of Port-au-Prince is the capital of Haiti and 800,000 people living in tents to this day and it's not because the aid doesn't reach there it's just that the infrastructure of Haiti is such that it, before the earthquake it didn't work right. so you had only 10% of the people who had fresh drinking water only 20% of the people who had access to any kind of sanitation and uh, even like a ditch that would take their sewage somewhere else and so today people just you know they go to the bathroom in a plastic bag and they just fling it wherever they can there's no fresh water so the aid organizations are just bringing fresh water into the community um, and that's the only way that people are living and 4,000 people have died of cholera since January 1st to, to now so it's it's just so difficult there to understand how bad and then on top of that an earthquake happened you know yeah. and um, uh, but what I saw there was a lot of incredible people who are doing everything that they could in their power to survive to make things better for themselves for their community um, both aid workers as well as the the citizens of Haiti are working so hard every day to put their nation back together and you know anytime you see somebody who's working really hard they deserve an opportunity so any opportunity that we can afford them from 
from our position in the States, um, we should do it. I know Jam Cruise is going to be stopping in Haiti this oh, yeah. year on one of their stops. Okay. And so um, I encourage people to go to the Jam Cruise website, organize whatever you can to bring down the Haiti, and then get off the boat, get off the beach, and go into the town of Port-au-Prince. Just Don't just hover around the mm -hmm. beach area, but go into the town so you can see what's going on. How does this, doing this work and seeing these people trying to help out and, and seeing people suffering as well, uh, how does that inspire your music? Well, everywhere I go where I see people suffering, I see people who are surviving with a lot of love, you know, because like sometimes you, you don't have food, you don't have shelter, you don't have these basic things that we take for granted. And all you, do, all you have left is your smile or your music or your song or your dance or your laughter. And so there's so much of it. And, and, um, and so I get inspired by that. I get inspired by people's ability to overcome difficult situations. And that's, that's what this last album, The Sound of Sunshine, is all about. It's about finding the sun where it, is, it isn't visible, you know, like it, it's the, the ability to hear sunshine, you know, it's inside your heart or it's in someone else's smile or voice or something else. You know? Michael Friday and Jolene and Jay are here with us, Radio Woodstock 100.1. Uh, Going to hit the main stage with the big band. I know you just played a nice acoustic set over yeah. there in the Awareness Village, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, hearing. Uh, are we going to hear some new songs today, too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah right. I, I would put a set list together. Okay. I've, heard, I've had a couple of requests already for some really old songs. So <laughs> 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 multiple requests from fans. Love so me unique. I got to pull them out. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be doing, and, and you know, we've been doing a lot of versions, new versions of stuff that we've done in the past. So even the older stuff that we play, we've, we've revamped it and nude it up. All right. <laughs> uh, I know. Is that the right expression? <laughs> it is now. Like it's off. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You knew yeah. you did it up. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got a chance to say hi to Mavis Staples. Yeah. Today. She's, she's one of my favorites. Yeah. She's, she's so amazing and so full of vitality, you know. And, um, you know, she, yeah, we see her in all the strangest places. We saw her in Perth, Australia, which is the far west coast of Perth. It's, it's like if you were to look on the globe, it would be as diametrically opposite <laughs> side of the globe from where we are right now. And she was down there, and her band is so great, and she's just so amazing, full of fire.